If you want to become a hacker, work in incident response, system administration, or even cloud engineering, basically anything in IT, one essential skill set is learning how to comfortably use Linux commands. Today we're going to start a series on over the wire covering Bandit as we walk through these various levels. I hope that those with aspirations for these kind of careers, but do not know where to begin, learn a ton of fundamentals from this because I want to see you succeed. Now this can be a little daunting at first, but as with anything, repetition. This is geared towards beginners and will teach you the basics in order to continue your journey and your respective career goals. I will not cover how to set up a virtualized environment or go into what operating system versus the other. This is just covering Linux commands. But if you want my opinion on how to quickly get started, VirtualBox Ubuntu. Set it up and then come back to this video. And now we begin. So after you review this information, we're gonna head to level zero. So now it is asking us to SSH into their lab environment over port 2220. The username is bandit0 and the password is bandit0. So we're going to SSH using bandit0 as a username connecting to this target over port 2220. When asked for the password, bandit0. Before we move on to level one, let's go over what SSH just did for you. So SSH is a protocol, a network protocol that stands for secure shell or secure socket shell. Uh, this gives users a secure way to access computers over the network. Um, this is over port 22, um, but at this kind of level, we're just sticking to Linux commands. So moving on to level one. So for this objective, there is a file called readme located in the home directory. Now you can tell where you're currently at by this location here after the username and server. So this tilde device is, shows that you're currently in your home directory. Uh, it then gives you instructions on how to get to the next level once you find the correct password. Uh, the Bandit series also gives you a couple hints uh, for each level to kind of help you progress through it. So the biggest one here is ls. So ls is a command to list computer files in Unix and Unix-like operating systems. Um, so when, when we run this command, we see there is the file that we're trying to read. And then our next one is cat. This will allow us to read this file. And this will be our password for bandit1. So here we will control D out of this SSH session. Change this to bandit1 and then copy and paste this for the next password. And we're now moving on. Okay, now we're gonna go to level one. The password for the next level is, in a, is stored in a file called tack or dash, however you wanna call it. So when we use the previous command ls to list the current files in the directory, um, you can't necessarily type out this dash because it just won't read it. But if you were to redirect the dash file with a standard in operator, this will give you the password. Uh, so let's go into what standard in versus standard out is. So standard in, which is spelled like this, uh, this is used for taking text as an input. So basically 
we're taking our file here and inputting it with the cat command. Now standard out, this is standard output. And it is basically taking the output of our command and storing it in the standard out stream. So let's SSH into the next box. Um, here, using the password from before, here we can see the objective is to read a file called spaces in this file name. So when we do an ls, this may be confusing at first because it could appear as multiple file names. Um, but if you do an ls pack al, you can see that this is actually just a single file. Um, but in order to read this, if you try and cat it and you tab out, some terminals will automatically include these escape characters in order to read the file. Uh, another way is to use quotation marks and then this will read your file or single quotes is another one. And that is your password for the next objective. So moving on to the next level, we can see that the password is stored in a hidden file in the in here directory. So when we do an ls, we see in here, and then in order to go into this other directory, we have to change directories using this cd command. So cd in here, and then when we perform another ls, we don't see anything. That's because based off this hint, the file is hidden. So all hidden files and folders in Linux are stored with a dot in front of their name. Now in order to see this, you can do lstacA and it will show you the file name. And then we cat the file and there's our next password. So now we're moving to level four. The next password is stored in the only human readable file in the in here directory. So first we'll perform a listing of the current directory, change into in here, and then do another ls. Here we can see there are all of these files that may contain the password. So the password is, the, is in a document that's human readable. Um, there's a command called file which basically gives you information about any file passed as a parameter. For example, we'll take the first file and then this will show you that it's just data. So when we try and cat it, it's just a bunch of garbage basically that you can't read. Um, since there are so many files in this directory, let's take the opportunity to write a quick bash script uh, to knock this out at once. So this would be for i in zero to nine, do that previous command that we just performed and then here we'll insert our parameter and then done so here we can see that the file command iterated through zero on this last digit through nine and then eventually found that seven contained ascii text which is human readable so when we try and cat that file we get the next password. On level five, there's a file somewhere in the in here directory and has the following properties. Um, it's human readable, just like the last one. The byte size is 1033 and it's not executable. 
Um, so first let's do an LS and see what we're working with. And we can see that that is a lot of directories. Uh, if we just do a single directory, we have all of these. Um, if we wanted to see the file size, we can see them here. Um, in order to narrow this down some more, uh, we can use the find command. So when we use man find, uh, this is basically the manual uh, for this command. Um, if we search for size, we're able to narrow this down because we see that this is 1033 bytes. So we can specify C with size to look for this thing. Um, so we can type in find pack size 1033 and then C and we will see if this uh, comes up with a single file or not and it does so when we try and cat it that is our next password our next objective six uh, basically has a whole bunch of other properties that we can utilize the find command in order to locate the flag. So uh, first we'll see what we're working with. Um, so there are no listed files here. Um, we can basically search the entire server based off of the root directory starting from here but first we're going to try and narrow down what extra flags we need with the find command in order to locate this flag so first we see user um and we can see that tack user is a flag we can use as well as tack group um so here we will do find and then start off the location at the root of the directory using tack user bandit seven at group bandit six and then again pack size 33c So here, uh, previously, we discussed standard in and standard out. Uh, there's also standard error. Uh, in order to redirect all of these error messages to null so that they don't show in standard out, we just need to add a two gator dev null. And there's our password. So yeah, today we got to level seven. Um, this is part one in the coming episodes. We'll go further into this bandit series and then keep building and building from there. Um, eventually moving to bash scripting and more complex operations. Uh, work ahead if you can. Um, but yeah, hit that like button, notification bell, comment and subscribe. Uh, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys on the next one.